I just love Blaze Blue, so it comes with no surprises that I love the visual novel spin-off too, X Blaze. The first game has a very interesting story, a unique visual style, and a pretty creative gameplay gimmick. Therefore, I had big expectations for the sequel, Lost Memories. I just couldn't wait to play this. Finally, a dating scene where the main point is the plot, and not some stupid erotic stuff. Yes, I'm looking at it. So much plot. Round and bouncing plot. Oh, yeah! <laughs> A visual novel again? This genre never impressed me. The graphics are always so basic. Even though this one is made by Arc System Works, I am not sure if they are able to make a visual novel that uses the full potential of the PS3. Haha! <laughs> Don't be foolish, you fool who says foolish things. Behold, this is the power of a AAA game made by a high level company. Fist your eyes on this glory! What? What is this shit? Yumeniki? Actually, if this was creepy and creative like Yumeniki, those parts would be quite interesting. Unfortunately, this is just a short segment you have to play between each scenario. This takes place in a world called Phantom Field. You play as a young girl looking for her little sister who got trapped inside this dimension. She is guided by nobody, a mischievous entity of unknown origins living inside this empty world. Nobody? What a stupid name! And what a kinky dress! Hey! Those siblings look very familiar! Oh no, this is a spoiler. If you really don't know about that yet, I will put a skip button around here, but... Oh well, here you go. This little girl here is actually Nine from the Blaze Blue lore. And the little sister she's looking for, it's Celica, who recently became playable in Chrono Phantasma Extend. Well, this is pretty obvious for any Blaze Blue fan, but even if you don't know who those characters are, there is nothing to worry, because their identities will not matter for this plot in the slightest. Wait! Are you sure this is really her? Yeah, I know this could be our trick, and she could end up being a completely different character. But there was this little hint when I tried to name her as Nine. The game doesn't allow me to, and then this message appears. It's not the time to use this name yet. Whoa, this is so meta. Anyway, you will spend most of the game in this field. Your only objective here is to walk around looking for memory fragments that will give you visions from the first game. But this time around, you will see things by the perspective of S, the main hearing from the previous game. Different perspectives of the same story? I love that! So, what do you need to do to see those? That's easy! All you need to do is fall into the spit. <coughs> so, that's it? You just fall? Yep, this is basically the main mechanic in this game. You collect memory fragments, answer some true questions, and then jump into the abyss. Oh no, I'm falling! Well, at least the story is really good, right? Even though most of the game is a rehash of the first x plays you finally get a follow-up story to the events surrounding Toya against the Unions. Okay, now pay attention. I will give a spoiler, but this is actually a very important information for any Blaze Blue fan who plans to buy this game. That's why there will be no skip button this time. The events in Lost Memories reveals that X Blaze is officially out of the Blaze Blue canon. Now, the two visual novels are only an alternative timeline inside the Blaze Blue universe. Only around 20% of it is still important for the story in the fighting games. 
This means that the story of X-Blaze has lost most of its relevance in the Blaze Blue universe. Characters like Nine and Celica, and elements like the Embryo, are still in the canon. But all the rest has nothing to do with Ragnar and his friends anymore. That's too bad. Because I like the visuals in this game. Everything is on a third person view, instead of the usual first person using in most dating scenes. And there is no boring task describing stuff to you. Everything you need to know is visible in the scene, which means you can really feel like you're watching an anime. Even the fight scenes are good, because there's no text describing the action, so the pacing is always fast, and this helps to keep things interesting. Nevertheless, X-Blaze Lost Memories still holds up on its own as a very decent visual novel. It's far better than most games that come out for PC every month. I rate it as above the average, but it could be even better. It's only half as good as the original X-Blaze was because of the lack of new elements and the rehashed plot. The first game was filled with interesting characters and plenty of fighting scenes. There was something important happening all the time. Lost Memories, on the other hand, is more of a slice of life, with more focus on cute scenes and everyday romance. Among the new features, we get two alternative versions of old characters and two cameos, but no new characters. Even Brain Catch, who was advertised as a new major character, only gets around 10 lines in the entire game. At some points near the end of the game, this feels more like a manga that got access. Congratulations! Since Lost Memories adds almost nothing to the original plot, it means that this is actually a fun disc, which the term used in the dating scene realm to describe a ship sequel that has more fun service than anything else. Well, that was harsh, but it's the truth. Hey, I'm also depressed about this, you know. I was really hoping for some X-Blaze characters to become playable in Blaze Blue. Like this. It would be so exciting to play as her. Her drive could be Lonely Opas, which gives her the ability to become even more bouncy and awkward than my Shiranui. <laughs> That was awful. Moripi is really disappointed. Yeah, I know.